Every year, there's an annual playlist super collab that engulfs the movie corner of YouTube for a few weeks, and I'm awfully late to the party. Never done one of these before, and when I want to hop on, I end up moving house and losing internet for a week. But we're here, and it's time for one of the latest episodes of One Villainous Scene. First choice would be Syndrome, but that was swiped so early it's what introduced me to the playlist being started this year. And while there's many, many villains to choose from, and I personally was thinking of maybe Farquaad, The Prowler, Prince Charming, Pal, or Waternoose, I realised I wanted to go with something slightly to the side of the villainous tag. And luckily it didn't get picked after 200 entries already. Yes, because today we're talking about the villain who's actually a hero, Ralph from Wreck-It Ralph. After all, what even makes a villain a villain? If you are a bad guy. But this does not mean you're a bad guy. Right? Well, the scene we're diving into specifically is the lowest point of the movie. Truly the most villainous move Ralph is ever to make. And it's the car crushing scene. You know the one. After spending the whole movie resisting against the societal norms of him being the outcast, Ralph has spent the whole movie chasing after a medal just so that he can belong up with everyone else. His game depicts him as bad, but that doesn't mean he has to internalise it. But upon gaining the thing he wants, a medal of any sort, he's told that in order to save Vanellope's life, he must stop her from racing or risk her having her entire game unplugged and her along with it. It's a bittersweet turn of events forcing Ralph into an act of evil from the perspective of Vanellope, but without the malice of trying to do bad. And so as the man who told this info just drives away and Vanellope has yet to make a reappearance, he steps up to the vehicle he made specifically alongside Vanellope. Not exactly a perfect machine, but oozing with personality from the both of them. And we saw precisely how the two of them built the thing. Irrevocably, it's a symbol of their friendship, signed and everything. And it's physical proof that Ralph can do more more than just break things. It's a bit rough around the edges, but he can build too. But he knows what he must do now. Even as Vanellope comes up behind him, enthusiastic as always, it's like a twisting of the knife that he's about to betray with. This would be a lot easier if she wasn't here. But maybe there's another option. He may be built to smash, but maybe he can get around it, try to be diplomatic, try to talk things out. Hey, can we talk for a second? Wait. But her eagerness for her next move shoots it down. Even as Ralph continues to attempt this serious conversation, it's just not happening. And to make things worse, she's given him a gift. A doofy, sweet medal of her own and a message that hits at the heart of everything Ralph has kind of wanted. Finally, to someone, he's a hero. Not just typecasted as the villain for simply existing. And though it's not as shiny and gold as a real one, the sincerity behind it makes this medal even more valuable than something more official. And yet, this can't be the end of the road for Ralph. Though he finally has what he's wanted from the early stages of the film, the fact is he's invested in something much more important now. A genuine connection and a lifelong friendship. While the medal itself is great and wholesome, to Ralph, it's Vanellope herself that matters far more. And if this one bad act means she can continue to live in her world, then it's the sacrifice that has to be made. He's despondent. As Vanellope jumps around revitalized with a new finish line ahead of her, bouncing to the right of the frame eager to move forward, Ralph stays back, chained with the knowledge of the reality of what's needed here and now. His attempts at conversation have been squashed, and his guilt for what he's about to do only looms larger. But he tries to talk it out anyway, anything to dodge the worst case scenario. Who cares about this stupid race anyway? Right? Not quite so serious in tone, but it's an attempt, an uneasy one. But even still, it's not connecting with Vanellope. She's so happy in her little bubble that she's just joking around the whole time. Attempt number two just isn't going well. So he tries again, a little harsher this time. What I'm saying is you can't be a racer. What? Not because he means it, he just needs to get his point across. And he's not the best at words. But Vanellope certainly notices this time. Maybe noticing a bit too much, spotting Ralph's gold medal under his layers. A medal, by the way, which was just given to him by King Candy moments ago to turn him away, as well as tell all the information on the unplugged reality if Vanellope wins the race. Sure, he'd previously won it in another game, but the actual obtaining of this medal wasn't anything special. He didn't earn it or sweat for it, it just strolled up behind him and was gifted to him. How anticlimactic. Well, at least he got to hit a guy with glasses before getting it. Pop! You wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? <laughs> you hit a guy with glasses. <laughs> 
Well played. And so even then, it wasn't the center of Ralph's attention. It was underwhelming, being a stunning surprise for a few seconds, followed by being completely overshadowed by the info dump King Candy has to say, and the doubt he casted within Ralph over whether players would like playing a glitchy Vanellope. Even still, it doesn't look that way to Vanellope. To her, it's a bribe and a clear betrayal of everything they've built up together and she rips it out from him. And when trying to explain more that he's been talking to King Candy, it's only digging a deeper hole for Ralph, so he only shoots him down more. Listen, you don't understand. No, I understand plenty, traitor. And here's your midpoint reminder to subscribe if you haven't already. We're also going ham now on streaming content and our second channel. Here's our new schedule for all of that. More hours, more variety, and hey, maybe we'll cook some movie and video game food sometime too. And if you're watching this the day it comes out, we're likely streaming streaming now talking movies, so come on over! Or check my other socials which we've been doing more of too. Otherwise, back to the traitor. It's at this point any chance of a diplomatic approach is officially tarnished. Penelope absolutely refuses to discuss any further with Ralph and full on just splits away from him, claiming she can win the race all by herself. So it's time for action. All paths lead to this. Vanellope's trying to drive away, so he plucks her gently out of the car, grasps her in his giant hands, and tells her up front what'll happen. But of course, none of it is going in. Vanellope has made up her mind. I don't care, you're a liar! Up to this point, Ralph's only made moves that are kind and gentle, only spouting a controversial opinion, but otherwise staying firmly on the good guy's side, especially with regards to intent. He's doing everything he can to avoid the inevitable. But as Vanellope becomes absolutely impossible to reach, Reason with Ralph must again step things up. He lifts her up and plants her on a tree thing's branch, unsure in his expression if this is really the right thing to do, but it's the only thing left he can do. He has no other choice. He turns his back on her and says, I'm doing this for your own good. Even now, with his next move in his mind, he's unhappy with his choice, equally as upset and worried as Vanellope will be once his last resort is in action. He steps up to the car, Vanellope finally calming down as it dawns on her too, he looks at his big meaty claws and with a final sigh, he slams his fists down. He has become the villain to his own story, demonstrably destroying Vanellope's last hope to ever release herself from the shackles of being an outcast in her own world proving that he cannot avoid wrecking everything he comes into contact with. Not to mention the way this is shot exactly mimics the same style of a censored scene, just highlighting how horrific this moment is to Vanellope. We don't see the direct first impact of Ralph smashing the car. It's great and inconvenient for me looking for a thumbnail, but it also emphasizes just how villainous the whole action is. And as Vanellope screams out in anguish, the car is left shattered, as is any remnant of a possibility that Ralph and Vanellope are still friends. Ralph is left ejected as Vanellope runs away with her final line, You really are a bad guy. <laughs> Finally achieving everything he once wanted, and then just as quickly losing the new thing that was even more important. This is without a doubt one of the most memorable scenes in the movie. Not for being some fancy flashy attack, not for its distinctively witty dialogue, but for simply being a heart crushing personal betrayal and a sad symbolic twist that even as a good guy, sometimes Ralph has to do bad guy things to stay good. Though there is still something somewhat heroic in how he tried to use every other option first. Not to mention the crescendo of the music and the ace star voice performance from Sarah Silverman in this scene. Oh, it's just impossible to forget overall. Sometimes a villain isn't necessarily the opposite to the protagonist of a story. The lines between a good guy and a bad guy can be pretty blurred. And sometimes a villainous act can be the most heroic thing you can do. A sacrifice for the greater good. Even if in this case it's really manipulation from the true evil of the film. I'm Turbo, the greatest racer ever. <laughs> The fact of the matter is, a villain doesn't have to be a villain to be villainous, and a villainous act can be kind and heroic in intent. Within all of us is the potential for both good and bad, and a weird mix of the two. You can be bad, and that's good. You can never be good, and that's not bad. And from Ralph's experiences himself, as he puts it, Turns out I don't need a medal to tell me I'm a good guy, because if that little kid likes me, how bad can I be?
Now, if you don't mind me, I think I'm gonna catch up on the rest of Wreck-It Ralph. I mean, there's a stark difference between the end of this villainous scene and the true ending of the film. Plus, I need some wholesome friendship rekindling after this lowest point of the movie. For now though, I'll be ending it off here. And who knows, maybe we'll do some more video essays for our other, other slots. This was really fun to make, and hopefully being three weeks delayed won't seem too rude when trying to join in with this fantastic series. Thank you to Nando V Movies, I guess, for this prompt this time. I've been a watcher of previous playlist iterations, and I I really enjoyed getting someone involved this time. Perhaps we'll join for another next year. I'll try not to be late next time. My name's been Daz. You didn't really care. Come check if I'm live while you've been watching this. I'm really excited to tread some new territory over there. Oh, and next time we're doing another cancelled video where we've done Pixar, we've done DreamWorks, we've done Sony, so it's time for another big company's cancelled project. Give us a guess in the comments or see a second hint on our Twitter later. And I'll see you in a bit.